Restocking the Brunswick Rifle, Part 2, Barrel Bedding, William Hovey Smith, 2014. I'm the author of Extreme Muzzleloading, and here we continue our work rebuilding an original Brunswick Rifle. This is Hovey Smith, the Backyard Sportsman, and we are continuing our work on the Brunswick Rifle. You will hear some miscellaneous noises, among them a new kitten. Picked it up at the Dempsey Dumpster, and Mama Dog and it are getting somewhat acquainted. And Mama Dog's first instinct is, yeah, this is a yard critter that needs to get killed. So she is not very pleased. But, uh, back to the work at hand. Whilst they are getting their mutual socializations done, uh, let me tell you what we have done with the rifle. We have proceeded to partially inlet the barrel here for about the first six inches. We're not quite all the way there yet. Now this has been about four hours work. And yeah, now we moved a lot of wood here. Uh-huh. And we've also found some interesting things out about the barrel that initially were not quite so obvious. Uh, first off, this barrel is tapered. It is quite a bit thicker here at the breech mm -hmm. uh, than it is at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Mama Dow, no. Secondly, the lugs underneath the barrel are not quite plumb with the barrel and Mama Dow, no. The sights were set considerably off-center. No? Oh, yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, they were sloped off to the side of the barrel and not on the top. So I've gone ahead and removed the rear side, as you can see here. Well, about the barrel stuff. When we started, the barrel, when I hooked it in the breech here, would stand up at about this angle. And as I have removed wood, it's dropped further and further and further down. So now, it is not quite flush with the breech unless you really force it, which you do not want to do. The reason being is this long piece of wood on the gun is the most expensive part of this gun you will buy and you don't want to dare split it by getting heavy handed with it and trying to crunch it down and split the stock. That does you no good. You can repair stock splits but it's better if you don't do it in the first place. Now what I am using to work the barrel are my wood carving chisels, in particular these two. So you take this one and you put it down in the barrel channel and you go and you scrape up a bunch of wood. Then you sand it until it's more or less smooth. Okay? Mom and I and you proceed very slowly until you can actually sink the barrel further and further down in the barrel down. Move now. The, uh, this work is slow. Like I say, uh, this part took about four hours. Uh, I have more of <laughs> the barrel length to go. Now ultimately, I may have to reset even the breech plug to give it a little different cant like this. So uh, we are going to proceed to be doing about that. And hopefully Kitten and Mama Dog are going to get somewhat accommodated. If not, Kitten is going to have to leave the house. 
On this video, I really don't have the time to take you through every step, or, or this would be a series that would last for hours and hours and hours. But uh, just to show you how I'm inletting the blank, you take your carving tool like this, and you go inside and you push, and then that scrapes up the wood. Okay. There are many other tools that might be used, some of which are mechanical and some are hand tools. One of which is an inletting rasp, which is a dog leg piece of metal. It goes like this, chunk, and then you have a cylindrical rasp that extends for about three or four inches. And you take this and you scrub it up and down the barrel channel. And that, uh, that's a nice tool if you happen to have one. But since I inlet barrels so infrequently, I mean, once, maybe every five years I'll do this, uh, I don't have that sort of specialized stuff, so this is how I do it. So we scrape it out. Now you could chuck up something on a drill, I guess, and put sandpaper or grit on it. That's okay for smoothing, but it doesn't move that terrible much wood. And there is a danger of using mechanical tubes. This wood is very thin. Yeah, there's not much here. So it's very easy if you get overpowered, you just zook, burn your way through the whole stock. Ugh. And then you have a very dicey kind of repair to replace a piece of missing wood here. And hopefully you want to avoid that. So we take our time and go slow. And yeah, this is tedious stuff, but we'll ultimately get it done. We are proceeding with inlaying the barrel for the Brunswick rifle. And we are now to the point where we are actually inlaying the barrel lugs. Now you can see the three lugs here, as well as this that I have actually cut off. Uh, this is where the attachment was for the front sling swivel. But it's actually too deep for this stock. It goes down to the barrel channel if I would inlet it all the way down. So I'm not doing that. I went ahead and removed it. So we now have it where it fits. And the next thing to do is to cut out with this bayonet attachment here. Now this is very unusual. Uh, only the Brunswick rifle rifles in the period had such a heavy uh, bayonet attachment. Well, sword bayonets like this, and this actually goes with this gun, uh, were in the vogue at the time. And because the brown bass had such a poor means of attaching the bayonet, they decided to improve it when they did the Brunswick rifle. So they really put a robust attachment on there. So now we're going to inlet that and sink and bed the rest of the barrel uh, down into the stock. And now for some tips on how to do the details. Uh, this is black shoe polish and that's what I used to coat the underside of the barrel and the barrel lugs so I could see exactly how they were bearing and where the high spots were so I could whittle away a little wood and seat it all the way down. And paper and you put this underneath the barrel between the lugs and you can also feel along the barrel channel back and forth between the lugs and see where it's hanging up and see where you need to remove a little more wood and start again. Now we'll take sandpaper and sand the barrel of this channel a little more and do a little fitting here at this end and you know really bed it down and sort of tweak it a little bit. Now nearly 12 hours after we started this morning, guess what? Yeah. We finally got the barrel inleted into the barrel channel. And what have we done here? It was touch and go. You'll notice the indentations here where the barrel lugs fit. And so you uh, gouge a little while and you sand and you dig a little bit about the barrel lugs and you put it back together and you see if it fits and it sinks lower and lower down and so finally we did cut this notch. So
So we inlet it for the bayonet lug, and we have it fairly well along. And the interesting parts are that, yeah, uh, this is getting quite thin indeed. So you have to be very, very careful. And I managed not to split anything, which was good. But we have the barrel now, so it can go back into the breech and clump down very easily and very solidly. So that's exactly what you want to have happen. You don't want to have to push it over to one side. You don't want to have to really crunch it at one end to seat it. You want it to fall into place. And we have the muzzle so that the bottom of the barrel actually fits the stop. Woo! Yeah. So we're coming right along with this. So, as I said when I started, this is the, probably the most challenging part of this whole business is getting this blankety blank 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 barrel down in the stock. Well, got that one very largely done. I'll do a little bit of sanding on it. We of course still have to drill for the barrel wedges, but uh, the main part of this is thankfully and at long last done. For now, this is Hovey Smith reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be safe, be ethical, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. Among my prize winning books are Extreme Muzzle Loading, Backyard Deer Hunting, Crossbow Hunting, and Practical Bow Fishing. And all of these are available as soft cover and e-books. I have an eight-book e-book series on muzzle-loading guns for 2013-14, including building or restoring your own muzzle-loader. Well, I'm sorry to say the kitten had to go out of the house. Yeah, Mama Dog would not accept it. So it went to the animal shelter. Now take your time in inletting these barrels. Yeah, do that. For more information on my books, blogs, and videos, go to my website, www.hoviesmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye, and God bless.